Alright guys, welcome back to episode 2 of how to make a Minecraft uh, multiplayer online battle arena or MOBA. Um, I know this world looks completely different from last episode, do not worry, I will catch you guys up as best as I can. And of course there's always the private message feature of YouTube or the comments if you guys have any questions. But um, let me quickly go over my agenda and then we'll hop right in. So the wool is basically, I want to give another shot at, at explaining spawn chunks. Um, I kind of screwed up last episode and how I explained it. I didn't really screw up, but I didn't explain it too, too well, and I'm disappointed. So I'm going to quickly do that again. I won't spend more than 120 seconds, which is two minutes, um, on that, because I know that's kind of boring for the people who already understand. And um, I'll also kind of be explaining what variables are. Um, I call them variables. Most people call them scoreboard values, but um, again, I'll explain that in a minute. And then we're going to start on abilities, which is what you kind of see with that stone stuff over there. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so to begin, um, let me just quickly, briefly um, recap on spawn chunks. So this chunk right here, the one that starts with the stone block, goes lime block, lime block, lime block, that is like a square of 16 by 16. And it goes from Y level 0 to Y level 256, so from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. And it saves every block in that chunk. Now, or not in that chunk, because that is the chunk. It saves every block in that square, I mean, and that is the chunk, is the square. So basically, in Minecraft, if you go really far away from a chunk that, so that you can't see it anymore, Minecraft will save your computer's CPU by unloading the chunk, so it's not constantly worrying about what's going on inside the chunk, and it's only worrying about where you are. Now, the difference between a chunk and a spawn chunk is that a spawn chunk is where your character will spawn. Ours is set to spawn on this stone block inside this chunk right here. So because you need to be able to spawn somewhere immediately when you die, this, this chunk will always stay loaded, and so will a couple chunks around it. Um, more chunks than I have here, but, you know, you just have to imagine it goes out like, you know, four chunks that way, and four chunks that way, and four chunks that way, and a couple over there, you know. Just a basic, like, uh, radius of chunks. So those will always stay loaded, and that's why you build redstone stuff in there, so all your redstone stuff is constantly running. All right, moving on to variables. I call them variables. They're really called scoreboard values. Here's what's going down. In Minecraft, there is something called a scoreboard that tracks um, little true or false things or numbers and stuff. Essentially, my best example for it is when you load up a new world, there's a little stat in the scoreboard that says, have they opened their inventory yet? and it will it'll say no by default when you start a new world. And then you open up your inventory and the game says, whoa, he opened his inventory. Okay, well, now his inventory has been opened, so let's go tell the achievements that he opened the inventory. And then when it saves that you open your inventory, it will pop up with the message up. Oh, never mind, you guys can't see my mouse. Well, it pops up with that achievement get thing in the upper right that says um, checked your inventory or whatever. And... That's how that works, and we're going to be doing that a lot as well. Not necessarily with just true and false. We'll be using the scoreboard for a lot of numbers stuff too. But um, I think you guys get it. Basically, it's like true or false values. I'm going to show you how to create them. I've already created a few, so I'm not really going to... Well, I guess I'll do the commands. Let me. I have them all copied and pasted in a text file that you guys will be able to download and I'll have that link in the description. But first, the first command you're going to want to do, ignore my chat, um, the command is scoreboard space objectives space add space slot 1. Slot 1 is one word. You cannot put a space between the slot and the 1. You can put an underscore if you want, but no space. And then the last word is dummy. Now what it's saying is it's um, the command is doing, it's a scoreboard command, so slash scoreboard. And then in the scoreboard, there's teams and objectives. So you have to specify that you're playing with objectives. So scoreboard space objectives. You're adding a new objective, which is why you have add. Slot 1 is what we're naming the objective. And I'll explain why we're calling it slot 1 even later. And then dummy is a variable or scoreboard value that cannot be affected 
by anything but commands, command blocks, and scoreboard stuff. So basically, this is the command you're going to hit enter. I've already done that, so there's no need. And I'll, um... oh, actually, I already have it in here. The next command you're going to want to do is quite literally the same thing, but we're going to make a new variable and we're going to name it different than slot one, and it's going to be called slot one CD. CD for me stands for cooldown. And I mean, you guys can name the variables whatever you want, but I'd say for the sake of lack of confusion, um, you should probably stick to the variable names that I'm using and the clocks that I'm using. Again, it's up to you. It's your MOBA. You can do it however you like. Just doing it like this will keep things very um, non-confusing, especially in the later episodes. So once you enter this command, you'll have another variable called slot1 cooldown or slot1 cd. Now there's one last command I'm going to have you guys enter, and it's slash scoreboard space objectives space set display. Set display is a one word with no capitals, space list, space slot one. Now what this means is you're setting the display, meaning where you can see um, the variable or you know how much you have of the variable um, to a certain location, and our location is list, and if you don't know what the list is, I'll explain in a second. And then we're telling it to do it for variable slot one. So in the list, it's showing um, every player's um, value of slot one or how much they have in slot one because all scoreboard values are numbers. So what does this all mean? Well, now you should be able to hit tab and you'll see your character's face. Mine has a funky skin on, so ignore that. Um, your name, which is Perlox. And then you'll see a number, which is just zero at the moment, because by default, um, every scoreboard value you have is zero, and we haven't changed it at all yet, so it's going to be zero. Now, what the zero is, is that's what your slot one is. Your slot one equals zero, because that's what it should be by default. We're going to change that a lot, though, and the reason I told you guys to do this step with the um, set display is because I want you to be able to see when it changes. It's like a testing sort of thing, so we know if the machines are working or not. So moving on from there, I've already set up some clocks. This is just a one second pulser. Um, it has one repeater all the way back, and the rest of them are only one right click back. So uh, one click, one click, one click, and then all the way back. And that will make it so each of these corners will light up and then turn off for a second and then turn on. So like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And trust me, that clock is going to be so important. I can't even describe to you guys how important it is. These clocks you guys might have seen in my ganking grass redstone tutorial. If you guys check that out, if not, that's fine. These are going to be Minecraft um, command block minecart clocks. And these are also very important because they go really fast. So let's get into some of the commands that we need to make the abilities work. Now, I'm basing this off of League of Legends, so you have four abilities. Three of them that are like kind of normal abilities for your character, and then your ultimate, which has some amazing ability that makes your champion truly stick out. So to do that, we're going to need um, something to indicate that you have those abilities unlocked or, you know, available so that they're like not on cooldown. If you look, we conveniently have four slots in our hotbar. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it set so that um, there's going to be die in your hotbar. And I'll kind of show you guys what I mean. So at the start of your game, you'll have no abilities unlocked. So it will look like this, but you'll be able to unlock an ability. And then when you unlock the ability, it will turn green. Then when you put your, um, your little selector thing, like when you go to this slot, it will say, okay, he's holding the die. We're going to activate his ability. Your ability is going to activate and it's going to turn pink, which means it's on cooldown. Then when it's done cooling down, it's going to turn back to green and you can use it again. So that's that's how that's going to work. Um, I don't know if we'll get to cooldown. Um, looking at the time, we are taking up a lot of time. So I'm not sure if we'll get to the cooldown or even, you know, like testing an ability quite this episode, but next episode, definitely. But let's, let's stop talking about it and let's just start. <laughs> so... 
slash give perlox. Obviously, you'd put your name instead of perlox. Command underscore block. Very important command. It's how you get command blocks. If I were you, I would actually go right now into a chest. Uh, put some chest somewhere. For now, I'm just going to put it here. I'll make a more organized place later. And then you can give yourself another command block, or you can just do what I just did in middle mouse wheel click to get a stack of it and put those in there. That way you don't have to do the command over and over and over again. You can just quickly go and grab one. Now what we need to do is we also need to do the same thing, but we need to give ourselves the minecart version. Oop, uh, my bad. That's not supposed to be a slash. Oh, what's going on? Oh, okay, you know what it is? I put the minecart in the wrong spot. Minecart goes at the end. There we go. And again, I'm going to give myself a... Oh, I guess you can't stack those. Whatever, as long as we have one in there, I should be fine. So here you go. You got command blocks and minecart with command blocks. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in there. This in there, this in there, and this in there. And these clocks right here, these four, this is for your first slot. So you need these all for your um, your first ability to work. I'll, um, I'll set the other abilities up off camera, and then as long as you guys know how to set it up, you should be fine. Now let me grab the second command, or not the second, but you know one of the commands that we're going to need. So I'm um, grabbing it in a text document right now. Okay, there we go. So here is the command. It's called replace item. And what it does is it will take a slot in your inventory or any player's inventory or even a mob's inventory and it will replace a certain slot with a different item. So what this command says is it's going to replace an entity, which is a moving object in Minecraft that's not a block or anything, um, and it's going to find a player who whose slot 1 equals 0, which for us, equaling 0 means they haven't unlocked that ability. And we're going to give them a gray die in their first slot. So if we hide that command real quick, or actually I'll just hit enter because I didn't put a slash in front. We'll put it, why not, in this command block. We'll just paste the command in. You don't even have to put a slash because it's a command block. And there you go, the command's working. Now you're probably wondering why our thing equals zero, but we're not getting the die. Well, that is because it needs to be updated, like the game needs to be updated. So just do slash scoreboard, oops, excuse me, slash scoreboard players set, you can just do at P or your name or whatever, slot one to zero. And now it's been updated, and as you can see, we have this gray die. And even if we pull it out, it's still there. Still there. Still there. You know, I can keep going forever, but I think you guys have the idea. Now, in these next two command blocks, I'm going to do the same command, except if your slot 1 equals the number 1, then that means it's activated and it's active, so it will give you green die in your first slot. And then in this command block, we're going to have one so that if your slot 1 equals the number 2, then that means you've activated it, but it's on cooldown, so it's going to make this first slot turn to pink die. So let's go ahead and grab those commands out of the text document. Like I said, you guys will be able to download this text document for your convenience. Control paste, and let me grab the other one. All right, and there we go. So it may not seem like it's working quite yet, but we can prove that it works. If I put my hotbar here, well, actually, it doesn't really matter where it is. So let's let's say for pretend that I just unlocked that first slot ability. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it to 1. Oh, um, hang on a second. Did I put it as 2? Apparently, I put it as 2. Okay. So if we hit tab, you can see your scoreboard value for slot 1. My slot 1 is 2 right now. As you can see, it says 2 by my name. That's how we know it's 2. And because it's 2, um, this turned green. 2 in, in this means that 
I've the ability is ready to be used and it's activated. Now say I use the ability by putting my selector thing, this, this white box that I'm wiggling all around right now. If we put that on the first slot, it's going to use my ability. We haven't set that up yet, but we will later. But it's going to use my ability. It's going to turn my ability to, or my slot one to the number one. Now, if we look when we hit tab, it says that you know the proof is in the pudding. Um, my slot one equals one, and now the die is pink, which means it's on cooldown. Now for the ooh, oh yeah, I forgot. It's gonna it's gonna keep doing that. So let's set it back to two for a second, and then there's one more. Ooh, don't step in those. That's a bad idea. And there's one more command we have to put in there, which I'll grab. And here it is. Now this command's a little different. It's a uh, scoreboard players set, like we were just doing a minute ago to change what our slot one equals. And it's actually doing the same exact thing. It's finding a player who whose slot one, or actually, let's do this. It's looking for a player who their first ability or their slot one ability is um, pink or is pink die and their cooldown is zero meaning it's no longer cooling down and it's going to turn um, the ability back on and it's going to turn green so if we go ahead and we go up here scoreboard players set perlox slot one cooldown to zero now you can't see that in the tab menu because we didn't set it up to be in the tab menu but that's okay so now my cooldown is zero, which means this ability will instantly reactivate whenever I use it. If I go ahead and we change slot one to one, it should be pink, right? Because before, if I set it to one, it would turn it would turn one up here in my uh, list that you guys see with my face, and the die would turn pink. But this command block is saying, okay, the ability is done cooling down there's no cooldown left and thus it sets my number back to two and we get this nice green die to show that the ability is ready to be used um i think that's pretty much it we're definitely going into overtime here so i'm gonna have to cut it short next episode which will hopefully be really soon you guys will get to see me um showing you guys how to make it so the ability actually has a cooldown time and you'll see it turn pink and then automatically turn back to green instead of it just instantly turning back to green before you guys can even see it turn to pink so yeah again i'm sorry if this is really confusing i'm trying to keep it simple but fast paced and it's really hard to describe or me in general, I have a hard time describing things. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I'm going to have a whole bunch of tips in the text document with the commands. But yeah, I thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And stay tuned for episode 2. See you later, guys.